to take some work and it's going to get messy in here. Hey campus, Georgia, back in the man cave. Mary and I are having a little discussion here. I wanted to do some whittling and uh, it's really cold and miserable outside, not a good place to be. And of course, the man cave in the South 40s, freezing cold. It's a refrigerator today. Set up the place here in the cottage so that I could do some whittling here. Nothing too serious. Just can't decide what I want to do. I'm working on a uh, another head to my walking stick. I want to make a a little different head to go on there, a switcheroo head. Um, either that, or you know, I've been digging away at this piece of wood, and uh, it's been lying here. And I use it when I do my reviews. I cut it to show you the knife will actually cut. <laughs> But it's a piece of basswood and I don't want to waste it. It's really good for for whittling. So I, I think that's what I'm going to do. This won't make a complete disaster. As you can see, I have a, a little thing here to catch all the wood that's going to shoot off when I start whittling. But I think I want to make a fork. Just a, a regular fork to go with the other ones I made. Obviously, I want to practice some uh, making it a little pretty with some patterns on it. Using doing that uh, this thing here, which I can never remember what it is, and that is when you make the little patterns on there using uh, cinnamon, coffee grinds, whatever you want to. You cut in and make patterns and seal it in there. And uh, I kind of like doing that, and it's kind of like doodling on wood once you finish whittling it. So I'm going to make a fork here to go with these guys. I mean, you've seen these ones I've made. So I want to make a fork. It'll probably be in the range of these because this is about the same size. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I have my pot lift litter. I have a uh, sudza stick. And I have two kind of teaspoon thingies here. There, And I'm thinking of adding a fork to it. Maybe do a spork later. Different utensils. I like to just make them. It's fun to do. And I want to really work on my patterns. My patterns are pretty poor. <laughs> I want to get a little bit fancier and get better at it. So that's what I want to work with on this fork. So let's have at it. So I'm just going to get out my woodland stuff here. And of course, I've got my new beginner kit here with the knives, the whittling knives and everything. You can see it here. Also, it comes with gloves and everything, which is really handy. I do have other stuff here, and I did buy something else, which I hope is going to help me with the patterns. Now, there is a real knife you can get to do the patterns and everything. I plan on getting one, but I want. I saw this set, and it's from Holtzels as well. You can see it here. And it's got a bunch of little things, you know, it's got the um, the curved blades, it's got the flat blades, it's got short, sharp, all, all they, they've got all different sizes in here. So I'm hoping one of these is going to get me through the patterning while I learn. And then once I feel a little bit comfortable, get a real knife to do it with. So. Right now, Mary will be in charge, picking up all the pieces that fly everywhere. <laughs> you know, that's going to happen. I, I really need to pay attention to using gloves, I've noted because I'm doing a lot more whittling, I'm using a lot more band-aids. Oops. So, uh, <laughs> gloves. So the first thing I'm going to be using is I'm going to use my, my whittling knife. And that's the one with a little bit bigger blade than uh, the uh, the more thinner, more delicate blade. But I, I think I'll be able to do more with these. So that's the plan. I just um, want to... Runner. This is not the best strop. You know what? Um, so I, I, I got uh, the strop from uh, Kurt Isaacson. He makes them himself by hand. Very nice strop. And it's, it's a little bit better than just this plain piece. I'm going to find a piece of wood to put this on so that I can keep it with my, my holzels. But this goes in my sharpening kit for my regular knives. So uh, I'm going to just strop a little bit here. Um, I don't put a glove on this because I need to hold this. I need to uh, clean this off and put uh, 
boiled linseed oil on the handle because it gives you a better grip. Right now, it's slippery. The, the handle is slippery right now as it is. And when I put the, the glove on, it's, it's even worse. Just what the hand that I'm holding the wood with has a cut glove on and I just make sure I'm not cutting towards my fingers on this hand or towards me. So I have a, a basic idea of what I want out of the fork and, and I just did a, a very basic drawing. Round, I want it big because it's going to get some pressure on it. I don't want the handle to be too thin, it might break. I want it to have a hole at the end and then just three uh, sharp uh, forks on, on the end here. So I want a, a real dip in that fork so you can use it to to scoop as well as uh, to poke at things. Yeah. So is I want to get onto the basic shape here which means I have to get rid of all this stuff. I just got to work away down to the 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 shape of the the handle here and get that bulge there all the way across. So now and then I I'm getting close there so I want to start doing this bit now, making the handle and getting the more of the shape. Bigger blade. So this is where I am now. <clears throat> okay, still working on it, but I've run out of time. I'm going to have to uh, stop for a while and it's getting late. <laughs> so I need to uh, clean up and uh, get moving on. Really having a problem with these forks. Got to figure out a better way to do that. But we'll figure it out. Well, back at it again. Uh, I've, I've done a little bit more work on it and... Uh, more of the uh, the heavier shaping and everything, and I, you can see I'm getting the uh, spines going or whatever. Not sure just how thin I can get these without them becoming too weak and they're going to break. But really the idea is it's a fork, and uh, you can see the shape I wanted. I wanted that dip in it so you could pick it up. Um, it's fun making them. I just love doing this stuff so anyway i'm i'm <clears throat> i'm up to here with it and you can see um you've got the hole there and that dip that i wanted in there getting these forks is 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 really some you've got to be so careful because when you're cutting in here you're gonna start breaking off kind of gone as far as i want to with the knives i think i'm going to try some filing i i have Way back when I was a, a teeny weeny, I used to build models. I think I told you about this before. Plastic military models. Used to modify the figures and that. And I found some old tools that I had. Some small files and things. So I think that will might help me get it a little bit more fine-tuned. 
and I'll put them in. I sorted through them here and put them in the box here. You can see I've got a bunch of little files. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get in there and and clean up and round off bits and and maybe sandpaper and see how well we go with that. Once we have it all cleaned up, we'll put some little patterns on it. And uh, now I try and smooth it all out, get a little bit smooth, smoother. Try and do a little bit more with these. But like I said, I'm worried about getting too thin. Can't get too long, they'll just be too weak. Um, I don't intend to do any real stabbing with it. It's, it's more of a, this is a fork, kind of. What you think? Hmm? No? You don't like it? So here I am now. I've got it cleaned up with the sandpaper and everything. That's, uh, you can see the, the forks. Really can't get it much sharper than that. I don't think they'll hold up any more than that, but it's, like I said, it's more of an idea of a fork. <laughs> I've got a flat piece here, which I want to put some uh, pattern on it. A very simple, small little pattern. There's not a lot of room, but uh, maybe we can come up with just a very small pattern we can put on there and just practice that uh, can never remember what it's called <laughs> anyway putting the uh, I like to think of it as wood tattooing <laughs> we'll do that but I've got to decide what I want to do there so that's where I'm now the problem is is that been watching uh, people doing this stuff not necessary lists but the, the tattooing on the wood they actually do the carving into the wood, the pattern. And then they put linseed oil on. And they do the pattern again, and they, they get the linseed, on the, the linseed oil on there. And then they're getting coffee or cinnamon or whatever they're using and rubbing that in. Now, I wasn't doing that before. I wasn't putting the oil on before putting the actual uh, coloring into it. And I was having a problem. It would spread all over the wood and get my oh, I was like, oh, how, how does this work? And I think that's what I was doing wrong. I think I'm going to go and get some real vegetable oil and use that instead of linseed oil and then uh, putting a, an acrylic on it. I just want to use uh, vegetable oil. Now, they say you can do that just with the vegetable oil. And when you're done doing all the pattern and everything, you've got the vegetable, clean it off. You're going to rub it. 
you rub that pat and it pushes the wood over and keeps all that that uh, tattooing in it it lasts longer so I learned something new watching that video and then I have another little project I want to work on as well I'd like to to try and do at least one whittling project a week uh, something whittling and wood because I like doing that so uh, for me it's a nice relaxing time so I uh, plan on doing that and of course I'll be doing my knife reviews and all that good stuff but and all the other things I do after all it is <laughs> second chance George and whatever catches my fancy right well most of the time <laughs> So there you saw I draw it, you know, I just drew a, a very basic flower leaf pattern on it. And then I used this guy, which is not ideal because the blade is actually too thin. You want a thicker, broader tip here to push the wood apart. But it's all I got right now. So <laughs> now I'm going to put some oil on here and then... Uh, Put some lead or, or uh, I think I have some coffee grounds I can put in there and rub it in and let's see what happens. Now that I have the oil on there, I'm going to uh, have some ground coffee here and put it in. And let's see what happens. And you want to get it, make sure you get it in all directions here. So we got that in there. And there you have it there. That actually came out pretty well. Now, allegedly, you need to rub it in. So to seal it in, you want something that you can just rub it to close up those cuts you made so I'm just going to rub over it like that and uh, maybe a little bit more oil on or maybe I'll wait and do the other patterns on the other side I'll just put a little bit on here because I can can't have too much <laughs> And there you have the pattern on it there, my fancy <laughs> spoon, fork, spoony thing. That actually came out pretty well. Better than I thought it would. Um, if I have a, if I had a, a better knife, the the correct knife to use, and I, I can't remember what it's called. But this is what I was using, and as you can see, the blade 
is a wee diddly thin and you don't want it that thin. You actually want a, a, the blade to be more of an angle like that uh, to push the wood apart when you scratch into it. Let's probably make a pattern on the back here. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do. But I'm going to draw it out with a pencil and see what we come up with. <laughs> and just some little scratchings on here. And let's see if we can uh, get it as good as that. Man, this is hard. This is not the correct pen to do it with. A knife to do it with, but I don't have a choice until I can find one. When I find one, I will certainly get it. You really want to take your time doing this because if it slips, you're done. And I think that's it. I think I can feel them all done here. Just a straight line with a couple of lines through it. Just like that. So I've I've basically followed those those lines again. We I've already got the oil on here, so I'm not really too worried about it, but I am going to put some coffee grounds on here and let's see what happens. I apparently missed some lines, but we can get them later. And remember, you, you want to try and go in all directions with the coffee grounds so that you don't have any gaps in the cuts. So, and I missed a bunch. <laughs> so I'm going to do that very quickly here. Well, kind of. See, I was trying. <laughs> okay, let's get this off. Rub this all off. Now you can see my really bad leaf drawing and the lines on the back there. See that? And then the ones on the front here as well, hopefully. And on the back. So now I want to do that the thing where, well, I'm going to put the oil on now and try and bring out this coffee more. And on here, all over. And I'm going to do that rubby rubby thing again to seal everything in. So now I'm just rubbing over all of this to flatten the pieces that are cut. All right. I think we're about done here. And here you can see it there. My little fork to go with my little spoons. <laughs> this blade is too thin. It's too sharp. You want a broader blade, almost like a, a real wide uh, edge on it so that when you cut into the wood, it pushes the wood apart. And then I just, I used this, this guy, you can see it's uh, half circle. And I just used the bottom here. Uh, you don't want any sharp edges when you're rubbing on it to push it down because if you catch it you're going to chip the wood off or pull the, the the coffee grounds out and all I did was Starbucks French roast medium ground it up really fine I have a coffee grinder and uh, I just ground up some coffee grinds and of course I went and got some vegetable oil so uh, I didn't really explain what I was going to do there, but I'll just explain to you what I did. So I just, I finished it up. I smoothed it up and everything, got it to, 
roughly where I want it. And then I drew the patterns on. Now, the other thing, and by the way, I'm going to, I'll, I'll put a reference to a video down in the description on, uh, how to do this. And it was a really good video. He does a really good explanation of everything. And this is where I got the, the idea from <clears throat> on, uh, the correct way to do it. Cause I was doing it wrong. If you remember. So I, I drew the patterns on there. Um, try to keep it, the lines as straight as I could. The kind of patterns will be more straight lines. I'm not really ready to do any like rounding stuff. There's a trick to it. You have to, the idea is, is that cutting towards you is a natural motion to pull towards you. So you want to do it that way. So you're going to move your, your wood, whatever you're carving so that when you, you're always pulling towards you. Doing a circle is going to be a little bit more involved and I want a little bit more practice. <laughs> and I'm looking at the results here. I'm actually surprised how well, um, my drawings are bad, but you can, you can see that like a little leaf vine thing and a silly little leaf and, uh, some marks there. But you could trace patterns on or, or whatever you want. On that video that I'm going to put the link in below, he actually does a basket weave. And it's, you know, it looks complicated, but when he shows you how it's done, it's not that bad. And, you know, obviously I couldn't do that on here. He had a bigger spoon, a wider base, and more area to do pattern. I'm, I'm doing really small stuff here. So there you go. My fork to go with. It'll be hanging with them. So, uh, with these spoons, kind of match. <laughs> and uh, fun projects. I, I'm really enjoying doing this. Very relaxing. Um, I get, I, I need the, the relaxation and, and just settles me down. So that's why I'm doing it. Got to put a little bit of string on there. Put it on the loop with these guys and it'll add to that. And like I said, I'm working on another little project that be a fun thing to have that I can hang these things on when I'm camping. And it'll look nice in my camp kitchen. <laughs> Spoiler alert, that's what I'm going to do. Anyhow, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Get that out of the way. Pretty sure I'll be back again. I got a lot of things going on, like I said, and um, got a couple of sharp and shinies. I got one in particular I'm going to be showing you. Um, it was recommended to me, and I went and got it. And uh, uh, Lacey Lace recommended it to me, and uh, it was a special going on with uh, Smoky Mountain, and uh, managed to get one. So I'm going to have a look at that, and I'll share it with you. So that'll be coming up pretty soon I'm sure <laughs> let me hang up my knives forks and spoons well forks and spoons and pot lifter to say <laughs> thanks for watching and you all be careful out there even with these little sharp and shinies they just as sharp and just as dangerous <laughs> so please be careful and thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon take care <laughs>